Hello everyone, in this time lapse tutorial I'm going to show you how I did this drawing of this border collie on the left. Now as you can see this was a double uh, portrait here and I'm going to have the other collie uploaded in a separate video. So my main aim with this portrait was to capture the lighting. As you can see from the close up in the corner here of my portrait of the finished dog here, this had stunning lighting, the reference photo really was beautiful. So I needed to make sure that I captured the very subtle layers within the black fur but also that I made sure my contrast was really sharp. Now I spoke about this in my top tips for drawing fur in pastels. If you haven't seen that I'll link that video in the description below but contrast is so important. If I didn't have my dark fur here as dark as it needed to be it wouldn't look like a black and white collie. It would just look like a greyer version. So it's really important to make sure that the base layer you put down is dark enough. And that's one of the most common questions that can get asked is why don't my details show up on top? Now the most common reason for that is that your base layers aren't dark enough. As soon as you make your base layers darker, the lighter details that you want to be using will show up that much more. And if you're working with a paper such as pastel mat, like what I'm working on here, it enables you to build up your layers gradually and build up that depth with each additional layer that you add. Now the one thing that's really important to really bear in mind when you're working with pastels is about filling the tooth of the paper. Now you want to build up your layers gradually and this is something that I talk about a lot in my in-depth tutorials on Patreon. Because the content there, the video footage is considerably slower, you can see each step-by-step -step process. But if you ever get to a part of the portrait and it feels like your pastel pencils are gliding over your base layers, it usually then means that you filled the tooth of the paper. If you filled the tooth of the paper early on and you don't want to have to restart that portrait, you can use a workable fixative to apply more tooth to that surface. Now the reason why I mentioned about it not being finished and you then wanting to use a fixative is because a fixative will alter the colour and the tonal values within your portrait. So using them for a final fixative is something that I would never recommend. However, if you haven't finished with your portrait, it really doesn't matter that it's going to cause that slight shift because you're going to be adding additional layers on top anyway. There are a couple of things to bear in mind though when you are applying a fixative. Make sure that you hold that fixative a decent distance away from your artwork. If you hold it too close, you're going to end up with far more of a heavier layer and then all sorts can happen. It almost makes it look like the details have just vanished and that's what happened on the one time that I have used the fixative. I'd also recommend using a fine mist sprayer bottle for any kind of spray fixative because it then avoids any heavy droplets of that fixative being applied to your portrait. What can happen is you can end up with larger droplets that dry with a slightly darker colour. That can be quite hard to cover up especially if it lands on the background like what I've created here with that nice soft brown and those tan colours. If I ended up with darker droplets there it's going to be really noticeable. So using a fine mist sprayer can try to eliminate that issue. Now something I speak a lot in depth on the Patreon versions are my base layers. I really do take an extra couple of minutes here to get it as accurate to that reference photo as I can. I use pan pastels for this base layer and you can see that I'm really mapping in where my lights and my darks are. I haven't gone in with one solid colour for my base layer. I then add my pencil layer of refinement on top and then I add my details. So for me personally I find getting the softness and smooth details in pastels can be a bit tricky to do when you start off with a base layer and then you jump straight into your details. I like adding an in-between layer and as I say I do go in-depth with this in the Patreon versions because I do find that it helps to create those smoother, um, softer looking details which can be trickier to do when you're working on more of a textured surface. But you can achieve that, it is just about filling the tooth of that paper gradually. And you can see here that when I've worked on the dark fur, I've built up from dark to light. And this is how I will work majority of the time unless I've got a lighter coated dog or white fur. Now again, that will vary depending on the type of white fur that I am drawing. And that's why I wanted to split this portrait into two separate videos because the collie on the right has some browner markings but predominantly is a, a white dog. So I wanted to make that for a separate video.
Now, when it comes to the ears of any animal, you want to make sure that you've got the shape of the ear accurate and the lighting correct. You also want to make sure that you've got that base layer, just like when you're working with fur, that it's dark enough. If you've got a fur where you've got these really nice wispy details over the top that are usually lighter in colour, if they're not showing up, you're not going to have the same degree of depth built up within that ear and that's usually because the base layer is not dark enough. You want to make sure that you've got the ear colour as close to that reference photo as well, so whether or not it contains more reds, purples or it's a bit more of the pinker side of it, it's really important to make sure that you get those accurate. So I find white fur one of the most challenging things to draw because it's very easy to get muddy layers. Now muddying up colours can happen very easily with pastel if you're not using fixatives between each of those layers but it can be avoided with the specific layering process that you follow depending on the fur that you are drawing. So here for example I've started off with a lighter layer from the beginning and then I'm building up my shadows from there. That's going to mean that I haven't created a grey looking white fur and I've preserved my lighter fur details from the very beginning. So this is one of those elements where I will work in reverse and I will do light to dark. So as I've said, there are no rules in art. Not one thing you have to do exactly in the same way for the next portrait. You can approach things in a slightly different way. And as I've said, it's going to vary depending on that reference photo. And the shadow on the left side of the white marking is a prime example of that. Because the left side here is in more shadow, I, I went down with a slightly darker base layer. I could then build my lighter details from there. And this brings me back to what I mentioned at the beginning of the video, why lighting is so important. I speak about it a lot in all of my videos, how I personally like to prioritise my contrast over my colour. Now the reason being, I want to make sure that I get the colour of this dog accurate. Of course I do, I want to get it as close to that reference photo as I can. However, it's the contrast that's going to make the, the big difference and I do speak about that and show you in a side-by-side -side example in that video that I mentioned where I'm the, the top tips for drawing fur. Because let's say the, the dog was photographed 10 minutes later and the clouds went over the sun. The colour of that fur is going to be different compared to what you would be provided in a different photograph. But the contrasts are what makes that dog look lifelike look realistic not the exact color you could have two portraits side by side that are you know that the the colors are slightly different but the contrast is sharper on one of those photos that one is going to get far more attention than the other and i think this portrait of this collie shows it really well there is such a clear difference between the black fur and the white fur my shadows are really nice and clean and my highlights are nice and crisp so that's really building that depth and realism on this dog and there are a lot of warm colors within this portrait because it was taken on a sunny day but let's say it was taken on a day where there was more cloud cover this dog would still look realistic because my black fur would look black and my white fur would look white but there might be more bluer highlights within that fur rather than the warmer greys that I've been using so it is all going to vary depending on the environment whether or not there's any bounced light that's going to cause any slight color shifts but the contrasts are really key and I know I speak about it a lot but it really can make such a difference. Now my Patreon channel really does focus on the pet portrait side of things. I have a lot of wildlife tutorials there as well but I've got an awful lot on specific dog breeds, um, some, there's some cat portraits on there as well and also the various fur textures. So I've got soft fur, more of the coarser wiry fur like border terriers. There is lots of tutorials there that focus on that. So if my Patreon is of interest, I'll link that in the description below. And I also have a Patreon library on my website with a list of all the tutorials with their thumbnails so you can see the type of content that I've got there before you join. Now the really good thing with Patreon as well, if you're only looking to watch one tutorial, you can just pay per month as you go. You haven't got to join for a year. So that's what I really do like about Patreon. And if you've got any questions about that, don't hesitate to pop them in the comments or drop me a message on any of the social medias. They're all linked below as well. A question that I get asked fairly frequently is, do you draw the background first or do you draw the subject first? Now, for me personally, I've always drawn the backgrounds in first and that's because the fur like here on the side of the body, I want that to overlap my background. 
If you add the background in after around the dog, you can end up with a halo effect around that subject. I personally really don't like how that looks because it then doesn't make the subject look part of the portrait as much. So for me, I always paint and draw the backgrounds first and then I add my subjects in after. I'm then going to be able to add all of these fine details that overlap the background and when you are working on something, let's say with a scenic background, that's really, really important. By overlapping the fur over that background, you're making it look like that dog is closer to the viewer, which is really crucial in that kind of scenic artwork. Now, I think it's important with any portrait that it does overlap any background, even with something like this, just with that nice soft glow effect that I like to create. But as I say, with scenic backgrounds, that is really important. Even shorter coated dogs will still have a couple of fur details that overlap the background. So a big tip here, this shows it perfectly, white fur is never really white. There is always going to be a colour that's reflecting from that. White fur and black fur are highly reflective. So really study that photo to see which additional colours you need to add in your portrait. So one big tip as well is always leave the whiskers till the very end. They overlap everything else. So you want to make sure that they are the last thing you add to your portrait. So here is a photo of the finished portrait and I really hope the tips and techniques in this video were of use. If they were, I'd really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it really does help. And if you'd like to get notified of future content, hit the subscribe and the bell button. And as mentioned, if my slower in-depth tutorials are of use, I'll link my Patreon in the description below. And I'll be uploading another video next week.